Is this you? Getting excited and heading out for a ride on your motorcycle when you reach the traffic lights at the end of your street and become stuck. Seemingly waiting forever for that persistent red light to eventually turn green. Seeing cars on the other side of the road go before you even though you were there first. Every red light taking 10 minutes to change and you start to wonder, do they even know you're there? It's a common problem for motorcyclists, but fear not, because Quack's got the solution for you. <laughs> hey guys, I'm Quackerjack, and today we're going to be discussing one of the more frustrating issues that we as motorcyclists come across on our rides, getting stuck at the lights. I've been hearing that a few of you guys have been having this issue, and I'm here to dispel some of the myths and share some knowledge that might help you next time you're in this situation. Because we all know how frustrating it is waiting at a set of lights for ages and ages and seeing other people go past before you. First of all, let's have a look at the different types of traffic light sensors that are out there and how they work, so we know what we can do when we encounter them. The most common type that's found all around the world is called the induction loop. This is basically a wire located around two to four inches below the tarmac that runs an electromagnetic loop and is connected with the traffic lights operating box that's normally located on the side of the road. When a vehicle passes over this loop, the metal from the car or bike is detected by the magnetic field this wire puts out and sends a signal to the operating box which then triggers the lights. Now the sensitivity of these loops can be changed as it's an electrical current that's running through the wire. If it's set too high, it may pick up a lot of false positives and trigger the lights when they don't need to be. However, if it's set too low, it may not pick up smaller objects that pass over it. You can tell that the traffic lights use this system by looking at the road before the stopping line and seeing the cutouts in the tarmac. It's usually in a square, triangle or rectangle shape, as that's where the sensor is placed. In most cases, you can actually follow the wire line in the road and then it will show where it goes off to the side and towards the box. Another common sensor type is infrared. These are usually placed up high, either on a separate pole or sometimes on the light pole itself, and come in two types, active and passive. Active sensors emit low-level infrared energy into a specific zone, and when something passes through it, it detects the pulse and sends the message to the system. Passive infrared systems do not emit any energy, and instead pick up energy emitted from vehicles and objects nearby. When a vehicle enters the passive sensor's field, the sensor detects the change in energy and alerts the traffic signal to the presence of a vehicle so the light can be changed. There are also microwave sensors, which are similar to infrared and good for picking up a lot of vehicles. And the newest type is video sensor, which uses AI to detect traffic flow and patterns and adjust the lights accordingly. In really densely populated areas like cities, most traffic lights actually run on timers and may not even need to be triggered to turn green. A lot of intersections use a combination of these types of sensors to get a really accurate reading of the traffic. Uh, but again, by far the most common is the induction loop. Now I hear that a lot of people think that those lines or squares at the front of the lights are scales or pressure pads that detect the weight of your wheels going on them. And while pressure pads have been used in the past, they're really not common. And in most cases, what you're looking at is an induction loop. Now for cars, this is no issue. Because they're big hunks of metal, as soon as they pass anywhere near that magnetic field, it's gonna turn the lights green. But it's not always the case with motorcycles. There are times when the sensitivity of the loop is set lower and may not pick up your smaller motorcycle as easily as a big car and you could be left waiting as it skips your turn. And we all know how frustrating that is. So what can we do to help stop this? Well, now that we know that those lines and squares on the roads aren't actually pressure pads or scales, we can change where we position our bikes when we stop to give ourselves the best chance at being picked up by those metal sensing wires. So, the best place to stop your motorcycle when coming to the set of lights is on top of one of those lines and having the middle of your bike on top of it, as that's where most of your metal is. By stopping here near the cutout lines where the loop is, you should hopefully trigger the sensor a lot more reliably and prevent yourself from waiting there for several sets of lights to change before you go. Try not to place your front wheel on the pad hoping to activate it uh, because it may not trigger it with that smaller amount of metal at the front of the bike. If you find yourself stuck, you can also put down your motorcycle stand as some manufacturers use different metals that may be picked up by those sensors. If you feel you're stuck and you've got a car behind you, you can also try and shuffle up if you've got room, so hopefully their car will trigger the sensor. You can also buy things called green light triggers. Um, 
and they're just basically magnets that go on the bottom of your bike to help trigger the lights, but I've read reviews and most say that they don't really do anything. The best thing you can do with your motorcycle is position yourself in the correct spot on the road to give yourself the best chance at being picked up by that loop. Of course, sometimes traffic lights are just slow and there's no amount of good bike positioning that'll help you trigger them. Now, transport departments say that the settings on these sensors are set to detect all vehicles. But if you believe the sensitivity is set too low at a set of lights, you can contact the relevant department in your state or local council area and ask for it to be increased. In fact, in 20 parts of the United States, they actually have dead red laws, which gives motorcyclists an affirmative defense to safely pass through red lights if they believe they haven't been picked up by the sensors. But I personally don't endorse this or recommend it. So there you have it. Hopefully that provided you with some more knowledge on how traffic lights work and how they're triggered um, and some things you can do next time you're stuck at a set. I know how frustrating it can be getting stuck at a red light, so hopefully those tips help. Please do give me a like and hit subscribe if you haven't already and come find me on Instagram at quackajack underscore. We're going to be doing a giveaway at 10,000 subscribers and it's going to be a good one, so you don't want to miss that. Thanks for watching. I'm going to throw in some bloopers now um, and I'll see you next time. Traffic flow and pack. <laughs> the flow freaking me out. <laughs>